Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and this video we're gonna work on making the character a little bit better, implementing the actual character, and also um, setting up animations and networking and syncing animations. So let's get right into that. And first things first, I already in the FPS series used the same character, and I'm just gonna be using the same animations. Essentially, where you find them is you would head off of to Mixamo. We're going to Mixamo.com, and this is essentially the page where you wanna log in, and then you can download a whole but bunch of animations completely for free. And this is exactly what I've done. So as you can see here, let me just drag and drop them into the project. So I'm also just for organizational purposes, gonna make an art folder, gonna drag the materials in there, and then also make an animation folder in here. I'm gonna drag and drop these in here. And as you can see, I have an idle, a jog straight right, a running and running backwards. And then I also have a T pose. This one is a little bit interesting. The reason for the T-posing one is because for some reason the animations needed to be based off of humanoid, but instead of create from this model, they needed to copy from other avatar. And this is not the right avatar. Uh, I just want to make sure that we get this humanoid, create from model, I think. And then mark these, copy from other avatar, and give them the export T-pose avatar. Because there was something wrong for some odd reason with the leg if I didn't copy from this other one. So you can always just search for the T-pose one uh, and essentially copy and paste that in. Um, cool, now that we have these animations, they're set up from Humanoid. Another thing we want to do is we want to make sure that they are set up uh, with the ability to loop. So we have to go through and add loop time and we can also immediately name them here. So I'm just going to call this one idle, add loop time and hit apply. This one is going to be jog right and loop time and apply and same for the rest. Cool, now that we have the animations in here, let's also make sure to just set up our player correctly. So I'm going to go into the prefab and I'm going to go into where I have the polygon starter pack. I'm going to find the characters and I'm gonna add the SM character male, similar to what I did in the previous one. So here we have the male character. Um, and essentially here, what I want to do is I want to, we already have an animator added by default, I see. I'm just gonna un uh, prefab this, and we can now remove the body from here. And now that we have him, uh, we can start setting up the animator. So let me go into the animations folder again, and let me create a new animator. This is gonna be my player animator. And this is essentially where we're gonna be setting everything up. So first of all, we're gonna have the idle state in here. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the idle state in here. This is of course where we want to start. And then from there, we want to move into essentially a new blend tree. And this blend tree is gonna be called our movement blend tree. There we go. And this is really so we can easily and smoothly control movement. Now from this, I'm gonna to go to the simple direction, a directional blend. And also to the parameters, we can now add some uh, different parameters. This will be our uh, probably our forward and our right movement, like so. So I'm gonna make the first one right and the second one forward, just because it's X and Y, that makes sense to me. And now we're essentially gonna add the motion. So we can add a motion field, and we can also choose which motion to add. I can, for example, have this be running, which is our forward. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add three more motion fields. So this is gonna be our running backwards, and then I'm gonna have our jog right, and then I'm gonna have our jog right again, but on the right side, we can choose to mirror that. So first of all, let me just set them all to 0, 0, 0, and let's think about the logic. So when we're running forward, we essentially want the Y to be 1 and the right to be 0, right? So that's running forward, so that's 0 and 1. Now running backwards, we want to be going the opposite of forward, which means it's minus 1, which, you know, essentially is just the opposite. Same with the right, when we're moving to the right, we want the position X to be 1 and the position 0 to be, or Y, sorry, to be 0. And then similar thing, we want to do minus one as well when you're going to the left. And now you can, you can see actually how it blends between the animations when I'm moving these values here to kind of test and visualize with. Cool, so this means our blend tree is now somewhat set up. Now let's go back into our state machine here and choose essentially when it moves from idle to movement and back. So what we can do is we can make a transition and we'd want this to be when the forward is greater than 0 0.1 and we make another transition and another transition and another transition. I know this seems like a lot, but we do need a lot of transitions, right? Let's go back to the one we already had. So there's forward greater than 0 0.1, that's great. It doesn't need exit time because we want it to move from animation to animation immediately. And let's just start moving up through them. So this is the first one when we move forward. We also want one essentially when we move backwards. So when forward is less than minus 0 0.1, but we also want ones for when we move right and left. So similar thing. As exit time off, we go to the right when it's greater than 0 0.1 and idle right is less than minus 0 0.1. This should essentially do the trick. And now when we want to move back, that's a little bit easier because on the way back, we once again don't really want exit time, but this should be when all cases are met. So it's greater than minus 0 0.1. It's less than 0 0.1. It is 
uh, greater than right minus 0 0.1 and it is less than right less than 0 0.1 i hope this makes sense essentially it's just if we're moving essentially what we're saying is if we're trying to move in just any direction move into the movement state and if we have stopped trying to move in any direction move out of the movement state and back into the idle state that's what this should mean as long as i've set it up correctly which is entirely possible that i haven't but either way let's go and try and set up for the player movement the animation part of this also as a quick note if you want to work with cinemachine instead i did actually set up cinemachine to be working um in the fps tutorial i'm not going to be doing the same here because there's no point in me covering exactly one to one the same thing even though i'm doing that a little bit with the animations here so let's add the animator and this will be the player animator now with this animator, we essentially want to decipher when are we setting the parameters that we do in here in editor. So the parameters out here, which is forward and right. So when do we want to set those? Well, essentially we're already handling horizontal and vertical input here. So we can pretty much do the same thing down here at the bottom. We can do animator.set float. And here's what we want to set. Let's just start by setting forward. And that'll be the vertical input. And let's do the same thing where we set right, like so. And this will be the horizontal input. And what we should see now is a player animating. Let me just move the scene view to the side just so we can see that by its own. Let's hit play. Oh, sorry. And of course the animator was never assigned. I'll have to do that, which we do in here like that. And of course we also need the uh, animator controller to be actually set up to the animator. Now let's try that once again. Um, oh, and also another thing I just remember, but disable apply root motion just so that our character doesn't want to run away from us. Now let's go into the scene view out of the prefab. Let's have a look at our character here. And as you can see now, when we move around, we're animating. So you can see it's running, running backwards, left and right. And yeah, cool. So that seems like it's working. But now let's try and start up our other client. So starting up our other client here, you'll notice how he's not animating. He's just sliding around. And that's because right now we're doing nothing to actively synchronize that. And this is luckily very easy to do. If we just go onto the player, onto where we have the animator, what we can do is we can add the network animator. Now, if you have the auto sync parameters on, this will actually just work. But one thing I like to do to keep it a little cleaner is disable this. And then in our script now, where we reference the animator, we'll just reference the network animator. This is a bit more performant. And as you can see, it, it worked with changing out the code one-to-one -one because all of the calls are the same in the network animator. So you don't have to do anything else. Just change the name here. And of course, remember to set the reference here again as well. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this in and there we go. Now this should work. And now this time, it should also work with our clone. If I start them up, and there we go. And you can see now when I move over here, you can see how we are successfully moving around, how we wanted it to. Perfect. So now we have animation syncing and working properly. The last thing you might notice is how the player uh, can see himself. If you look down, you will notice that you see yourself. And this, of course, is something we can fairly easily avoid. Now, this is some somewhere where we do have to use layers. I think what we should do is we can set all the renderers. So let's move through um, all of the, yeah, let's do that. Let's move through all the renderers. So let's do private void set shadows only. And this will essentially set it so our player will only um, draw shadows. It won't actually draw uh, the actual body of itself. Um, and I think what we should do is let's set a list. I think we do the same thing in the FPS game. Let's set up a list of renderers. So I'm going to go private list of type renderer. And this will be all the player renderers. And now in here, we'll for each through all of the renderers. Let's call that rend or renderer. And then we'll do a renderer.set shadow casting mode. There we go. Shadow casting mode will be equal to. And then we'll set that to shadows only, like so. Which means if we are the owner, we'll be down here. And in which case, we want to set the shadows only should be as easy as that. Now, of course, we still have to drag and drop the visuals in. So let's go and do that real quick. So now going into the player renderers, of course, I'm going to drag and drop the character in here. But another thing is also, I believe his eyebrows and his hair are separate meshes. Yeah, here we go. It's your eyebrows. No, sorry, just his hair, I think. Okay. We can just drag and drop the hair in here as well. So now when I hit play, you'll notice how I can't see my own character, but we can see the shadows. And lastly, I guess, let's just quickly fix the shadows. This is a very easy fix. If you find your URP settings, uh, I believe that must be in here. The PCRP asset, I'm not sure why they called it that. Not the cleanest name, but either way. Going into shadows, you can see that's the normal bias. If we just turn that down, that should be cleaner. Should look smoother now. Um, cool, you can of course play around with these settings, but yeah, the normal bias is essentially what ensures uh, this happening. You can also change stuff like how harsh the shadows are, if they're soft or not. 
um, and so on. So yeah, you can play around with that and I believe the directional light also has some settings in terms of how it handles shadows and whatnot. Um, but yeah, you can play around with all this. But yeah, I hope that was helpful and I hope you got something working that you're happy with now. You can't see your own player, but you can see other players. So if we go ahead and we just start up another player, you can see how you can also see him perfectly fine and they can see each other, but they can't see their own buddy because that is working correctly. Cool. Well, I really hope this video was helpful to you. I hope you learned something new. Other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day. Want to leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.